so the light goes out parallel um, so the image really never has a chance to be formed uh, and the equations would give that uh, basically um, the image has been thrown to infinity so it's gone way over here effectively it never really has a chance to get channeled anymore and same thing over here um, and the magnification it was inverted all the way there and now it's basically huge um, because di has gone to infinity um, but again you can't really see that there's an image here because um, basically um, you know if it's at infinity it's not really an image now um, you can try this at home um, if you have uh, say like a shiny salad bowl or something like that you can use uh, one side of it for a, uh, a convex spherical mirror and then you can use the side that caves in toward you as a concave um, and it's actually ha if you uh, kind of bring your face up to it at some point um, when your nose let's say uh, hits the focus you can see what you look like with no nose because <coughs> at that point there can be no image formed of something that's at the f uh, focal length so the tip of your nose it's uh, at the focus then uh, the image can't be formed so there's actually a, like a, a little uh, a dead spot there where you cannot even though you're right in front of the mirror um, you will not see anything that is placed here an image is not formed um, so then you might think okay well this is the end of the line is um, are we going to be able to do anything else? I mean, at this point, the light coming off the object is so diverging that we can't channel it in anymore. So uh, the best we can do here is t for this very, very divergent light uh, to be kind of, it's not diverging anymore, but it's going out parallel. So uh, at some point, this was going to come to a head, right? I mean, it's some you bring the object closer and closer, and there's more and more divergent light coming off of it. and this is trying to channel that in but at some point you're just gonna break its ability to do that and that's what we've done so we uh... we have that the uh... light doesn't get channeled anymore into a real image it just uh... goes out parallel so um, is that the end of the line well no let's uh... let's find out what happens when we bring the uh, object inside the focus now look at the uh... light coming in from the object it's super divergent so it's not going to be able to be channeled and in fact now it can't even be made parallel. It's still going to diverge on the way out. Um, so here we have it. Uh, the we've completely broken the ability of these guys to uh, channel the light in. It's not even going out parallel. It's actually being scattered still. It's uh, it uh, it is uh, no no longer being channeled. Now you say okay well you can't channel into real image over here but this is where we remember that uh, this is actually still going to be an image. So an observer over here is going to think that these light rays, even though they're diverging, uh, they're diverging from a point somewhere way over here. Um, and same thing over here, way over here. Like so. Um, so uh, because these very, very divergent light beams have gotten kind of, at least kind of parallelized a little bit, they've kind of gotten bent inward, um, these go out uh, not quite as extremely divergent and so that's why it takes a long time for these to trace back to the image over here um, same thing over here so you can see this is coming out very divergent it does get the uh, lens does try to converge but the best thing it can do is for it to kind of not diverge as much since this thing is so close um, so since the uh, image has changed character uh, so drastically we have a lot of stuff here that uh, that we need to uh, kind of uh, correct. So, um, first of all, the image is not over here anymore. It's uh, going to be a negative image distance. So, the outgoing light side is over here, um, but the image is on the opposite side. Same thing over here. This is the outgoing light side, but that's not where the image is anymore. The image is over here. Uh, so, there I've corrected the image distances. Those are negative. Um, also, um, we need to fix this up. Uh, this isn't correct anymore. Um, so we're back to uh, this old circle of fun that we saw for the uh, the plane mirror and the um, and the uh, convex mirror and the uh, pane of glass and the diverging lens. So pretty much uh, everything we've seen up to uh, the point uh, where we saw the uh, these guys. Um, so this was possible 
for the these two this mirror and lens set, but only if the uh, object was sufficiently far away. And now that the object is inside the focus, we switch back to this circle of fun. So um, di is once again negative. Um, the image is again upright, so you can see that now that it, the you don't have that converging action that flips the top light beam and the bottom light beam, you can see that the top light beam stays on top, bottom light beam stays on the bottom. Again, the top light beam stays on the top, and the bottom light beam stays on the bottom. And once again, if it's upright, the magnification comes out plus. That's, um, that's basically that's one and the same thing. Uh, upright is magnification being plus, and it is virtual because there is no light actually emanating from here. It's just made to look like it is by the fact that this bounces the light off like that. So if you are tracing back this light beam, hoping to find the source, uh, the fountain of youth or something like that, uh, you'd be sorely disappointed at this point because there, of course, is really no light beam from here on forward. It just looks like it's coming from there. So for this uh, mirror and lens set, uh, both of these circles of fun are possible. Um, this one you had when the object was outside F and you were stable, still able to form a real inverted image. Uh, and then you switch to this one, which we're on now currently, where the uh, object is inside F and so therefore we switch back to a, a virtual image. Uh, so I wasn't kidding when I said that the um, object when the object was brought into F, the image will undergo a big change. Now I, I do want to point out that uh, this seems kind of strange. In fact, the image got thrown all the way to this infinity and suddenly it pops out way over here. In fact, it pops out over here with an image distance originally of uh, negative infinity. Now it seems crazy that it could jump from plus infinity, which is you know really no image at all, but the image got thrown uh, further and further out till it disappeared infinitely far away. Um, how could it jump uh, all the way over to um, the uh, minus infinity over here? Now, if that seems strange, remember this: is that uh, when the light beams were coming from here, they were channeled all the way, channeled, 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 and way out here. But then, when you go from that channeling it in to having it come up parallel to then having it be slightly a, like kind of how it is now slightly away from parallel so now the um, mirror has lost its ability to uh, channel that entirely but if it's barely diverging well if it's barely diverging it'll trace back way 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 back here so the image is now way over here um, so when the object passes through F uh, the image actually takes the opportunity to jump from plus infinity to minus infinity now of course right at F um, there really isn't an image so it's kind of using the opportunity to make the jump and it's also uh, taking the opportunity to flip um, orientation so we said that this is going to be up right now so this is kind of the what the flip that happens when you pass through F um, the moment before when you're just outside F you still have a very very uh, large uh, image distance over here it's a a uh, very large up, uh, inverted image and then the moment you pass through into F suddenly you have a very um, large negative image distance way over here and it's a very very large but upright image. So uh, again remember that if the image is further it's also larger so uh, this equation again tells us that if the image is uh, further away then it's also larger so uh, these images will be uh, greater than one. So what if we keep on moving the uh, object even closer until we basically put it right on the mirror and right on the lens? Um, I've removed some superfluous points from the, uh, the lens since uh, they just don't matter anymore. Um, so what happens? Well, at this point, we can realize and use our intuition that the image moves in and eventually the um, object and image meet right on the mirror and that's because we have to cover recover a plane mirror behavior and similarly as the object moves in over here the uh, image moves in to meet it because at the end we have to recover pane of glass behavior um, so that's what the uh, equations would give you that uh, everything merges at the end and uh, the magnification becomes plus one and uh, here I have it graphically so at this point um, 
as I discussed with the other mirror and lens set, you have to, at this point, you're just off the flat part and uh, it's behaving like a plane mirror. So uh, you have object and image um, and same distance and same size. And uh, so the magnification is plus one. And uh, here uh, we've recovered pane of glass behavior. So the, uh, the, uh, as we've moved the object in from the focus to zero, the image has caught up and has come to merge with it. So if you look at something, if you're an observer over here and you look at something here, you'll just see it, um, a pane of glass behavior. The image and object have merged. Um, the, where you think you, the thing is, is now really where it is. Um, so I'll pull up the applets here. We can do kind of a grand summary. Uh, here's the concave mirror. Um, object can't be at infinity. Uh, can't take it that far, so the object is not quite at infinity, or sorry, not quite at F. And then I go ahead and I bring the object in, and the image moves out. C is the crossing over point for size, and for uh, or for magnification and for distance. So now you can see the image is further um, and it's larger. By the way here you can notice there's a warning because the one of the ray tracing things doesn't work so that's why ray tracing is more kind of just uh, fun but uh, not that useful. And then finally we bring this out to F or bring this the object into F. We've thrown the image out to infinity it doesn't form anymore, the light rays are just going out parallel and then it pops out from the other infinity, very large, and then finally we merge on plane mirror behavior. Um, can't quite get this on here so this doesn't quite shrink enough and um, is a little bit further away. Um, and then running through it again with the um, um, converging lens, um, let me try it over here. Um, so the now the object is really far away so this is almost at the focus um, it can't be quite infinitely far away so it's a little out from the focus um, and then as I bring it in more and more diverging light arrives here so this has a harder and harder time channeling it you notice this moved uh, away and let me see if I can find it right about there uh, ish that's my quote unquote C so you can see it's about twice as far out as the focus here to avoid the uh, heresy I was talking about they don't label it at all but this is uh, the kind of the analogous point for C so this is where uh, this has grown to be the same size and it's the same distance and if we bring it inside C that's again the crossing over point now this is really divergent. Uh, this has a harder time channeling it in. This is further away. The image distance is now larger. This uh, away, the magnification is greater than one. And then at F, we throw the image to infinity, where it then pops out at the other infinity, and then eventually will merge on. Can't quite get it there on the pane of glass behavior. So that's it. Um, kind of play around with that. Make sure you have the. Uh, of relationships all kind of down. Um, the other thing I did want to mention is that here you do have a focal length on both sides. So um, over here I said the uh, focal length was positive because it's the same side as the outgoing light. Here you have a focal length on both sides. So what I suggest is just memorize, just memorize to you always use F for these, uh, for this. Just in fact, just memorize that you need F for both of these. F is positive for these, this mirror and this lens. Just like for the uh, other set, use them both always F is negative for the uh, con convex mirror and the diverging lens. And once you understand those single mirrors and lenses, it's very easy to do a multiple lens and mirror system. I'm going to tell you in about 30 seconds. The image created by the first lens or mirror becomes the object for the next one, which is just to say okay, the next one it doesn't have a clear view, uh, it only has what the first thing preceding it feeds it. So you just figure out what is the image of the first mirror lens and that becomes the object that you use for the next one. 
So for example, let's say the first one makes a real inverted image and then the next one makes a real inverted image of that. Well, if you invert it twice, it's upright again. So it's possible to have a real upright image with a multiple lens mirror system. Uh, you can't have it with a single mirror lens. That's why I kept on saying that for a single mirror lens.